Hello, everyone, and my name is Samantha Simpson, and I am the newest on-site health coach with MNPS and Cigna. Um, today, we'll be talking about eating well and living better. Okay, once I get this technology. Okay, so today we are going to discuss healthy eating. What foods fall into this category, strategies for making nutritious choices, and getting the nutrition you need without overeating. Finally, we will look at healthy ways to incorporate foods into your diet um, without breaking the bank. Here's a little humor to help us kick off our session. Who doesn't love baking with chocolate guilt trip chips? Remorseful's in every bite. Okay, so why healthy nutrition? A healthy nutrition or eating plan can ensure you have the energy you need throughout the day and help you feel your best. Healthy foods don't give you the energy slump like high sugar foods. Ensure, it also ensures you get all the vitamins, minerals, and other nutrients you need for a healthy body. Choosing healthy foods takes the guesswork out of preventing disease because much of prevention is in what you eat. For example, eating a diet high in plants and heart-healthy oils and low in sodium can help reduce high blood pressure and improve heart health. Reducing processed foods high in sugar can help prevent or control diabetes. So in other words, be kind to your body. It's the only one you get. Healthy eating made simple and easy. First, we're gonna talk about reading labels. So most of us know why it's important to eat healthy. It's the how part and putting it to practice that can be difficult. Today, we'll focus on two simple ways that you can start to become healthier. One is to learn how to read food labels and the other is learning how to build yourself a healthy plate at mealtime. Let's start out by talking about reading the actual label. So picture yourself at the grocery store. Generally speaking, foods on the perimeter or the outside aisles of the grocery store are the healthier parts. So that's where you find your produce, your dairy, your meats, and your grains. See, in the middle is where it can be tricky. But the good news is most of those fruits are packaged and set in the middle and have the nutrition labels we need. Understanding the nutrition labels can help you make better food choices. First, we're gonna talk about the gray section. That's your serving size. This section shows how many servings are in the package and how big the serving is. Serving sizes are given in familiar measurements, such as cups or pieces. Remember, all of the nutrition information on the label is based upon one serving of food. A package of food often contains more than one serving. Second, the big number. That's the calories. I know a lot of us look at that. So always make sure you look at that and realize that is still one serving. So for this example, your calories are 250 per one serving, but there's two servings, so that's gonna be 500. Now we're gonna focus on the purple section. That is the percent of daily value. This section tells you how the nutrients in one serving of the food contribute to your total daily diet. Use it to choose foods that are high in the nutrients you should get more of and low in the nutrients you should get less of. Typically, 5% of daily value or less is considered low and 20% of daily value or more is considered high. Daily values are based on a 2,000 calorie diet. However, your nutritional needs will likely depend on how physically active you are. So talk to your healthcare provider to see what calorie count level is right for you. Now we're gonna look at the yellow section, which is the limit these nutrients. Eating too much total fat, cholesterol, or sodium may increase your risk of certain chronic diseases, such as heart disease, some cancers, or high blood pressures. Try to keep those nutrients as low as possible each day. On the nutrition label, the term total carbohydrate includes all three types of carbohydrates. You have your starches, your sugar, and your fiber. Another section to watch that isn't highlighted is the total sugar content. There are two main types of sugar. One, naturally occurring, which is usually in your milk and your fruits, and two, added sugars, 
such as those added during processing, which is your canned fruit, which is heavy in syrup or sugar, um, cookies, any kind of baked goods. So make sure you're truly looking at how much sugar is in there, whether it's added sugar or even natural. Now we're going to look at the blue section, which is getting enough of these in, uh, nutrients. Americans often don't get enough dietary fiber, vitamins, calcium, and potassium in their diet. These nutrients are essential for keeping you feeling strong and healthy. Eating enough of these nutrients may improve your heart and help you reduce the risk of some diseases. When you're at the store contemplating a purchase, please look at the label. It tells you what you need to know. Find those foods with maximum nutritional value versus empty calories. Counting calories works for some people, but not all calories are created equal. And those for of you who find counting calories to be tedious, focus on sensible portion sizes. Eat when you are hungry and just enough so that you're satisfied and not stuffed. So here is a picture from ChooseMyPlate.com. It's the ideal situation of what you should eat. It's the equivalent of what the food pyramid um, is that a lot of people know about. So think about it this way. You've returned home from your, your grocery store trip. You read your labels. You made great decisions. Now what? Now it's time to apply this plate method. Before you eat, think about what goes on on your plate, in your cup, or in your bowl. Everything you eat and drink over time truly matters. Start with small changes and build, and build up. The USDA Choose My Plate campaign recommends the following guidelines for building a healthy plate. Make half your plate fruits and vegetables, a fourth of your plate is grains, a fourth of your plate is protein, and a low-fat serving of dairy. Let's now dive into each one of these sections. So first we have dairy. Foods in the dairy group can provide nutrients that are vital for health and maintenance of your body. These nutrients include calcium, potassium, vitamin D, and protein. Calcium and vitamin D are important for bone and teeth health. Potassium is great for blood pressure, and protein plays an important role in building and repairing body tissue. So what counts as a serving of dairy? As you can see on the left in blue, a lot of these options are low fat. Why? Because high fat dairy foods are high in saturated fats and cholesterol, which promote elevated LDL. That's the bad cholesterol. So limiting these high fat dairy products is extremely important. So I'm gonna ask, can anyone give an example of any food from milk that have little to no calcium? Well, the answer is cream cheese, cream and butter. So unfortunately to those fellow cream cheese lovers, it does not count as a dairy. And for, you, for those of you who do not take dairy and would rather have different sources, in the middle there are dairy alternatives. Options are calcium fortified juices, cereals, breads, rice milk, almond milk, canned fish, soybeans and soy products, and leafy green vegetables such as collard and turnip greens, kale and bok choy. Now we have greens. What is a grain? A grain product is any food made from wheat, rice, oats, cornmeal, barley, or another cereal of grain. Bread, pasta, oatmeal, breakfast cereals, tortillas, and grits are great examples of grain products. Remember, this is a fourth of your plate, and it is recommended that half of that fourth comes from whole grains. When we talk about grains, there are whole grains and refined grains. Whole grains contain the entire grain kernel. As you can see in the picture, it's the bran, the germ, and the endosperm. Examples of whole grains are whole wheat flour, bulgur, oatmeal, whole cornmeal, and brown rice. Refined grains have been milled. It's a process that removes the bran and germ. This is done to give grains a finer texture and improve their shelf life. But it also removes dietary fiber, iron, and many B vitamins. Most refined grains are enriched, meaning some B vitamins and iron are added back in, but fiber is never added back. If you're eating mostly refi refined grains, 
you might not be getting enough fiber. Fiber is essential to your diet. It helps lower cholesterol, stabilize blood sugars, and supports healthy weight loss. Fiber will help you stay full longer and requires longer chewing time, so it gives your body and mind more time to tune into your level of hunger. How do you make sure you get enough fiber? Well, that's easy, by creating a healthy plate. If you're filling half your plate with fruits and veggies and making at least half your grains whole grains, you should be on track. So good advice to go by. When shopping, look for two different things. One, make sure it's made 100% whole grains on the label. And two, fiber content. Look for 2.5 grams or more per serving. You should be able to see the grains in whole grain bread and make sure the label doesn't say enriched. When it's enriched, it usually means it's refined. Whole grains are the healthiest choice, offering protein, fiber, and many vitamins and minerals. The whole grain has not been processed, thus it contains all of its parts. That's actually what makes it the nutty taste and gives it a brown, flaky appearance. Please watch out for misleading labels. Refined grains, or the enriched, can go by names like multigrain, wheat flour, 100% wheat. So going on with grains, we talk about carbohydrates. So all, are all grains carbohydrates? The answer is yes. Are all carbohydrates grains? And that is a no, because carbohydrates are also found in fruits, vegetables, milk, yogurt, beans, and many other foods like cakes, cookies, and chips. Eating nutrient-dense carbohydrates like whole grains, fruits, veggies, um, they all provide the essential fiber which helps stabilize your blood sugars and helps you feel full longer. Limit intake of calorie-dense refined carbohydrates like wheat, white flours, starchy vegetables, and refined sugars that lack quality nutrients. They're processed foods like chips, candy, and desserts. And a lot of times, these foods can spike your blood sugar and cause a rapid drop. So best of all, nutrient-dense carbohydrates provide your body with energy needed to fuel your entire workday. I know this is a lot of information, but the biggest takeaways are to look at your ingredients like we talked. When you look at a grain, make sure you see on the label that it's 100%. We usually try to do 100%, but look for the word whole wheat, whole grain. The word whole is very important. Also try to avoid anything that will have enriched in it. Because remember, the enriched process takes away parts of the grain that are very uh, nutritional to our bodies. Now we're gonna talk about protein. This is another one that's a fourth of your plate. Protein is an important component of every cell in the body. Hair and nails are mostly made of protein. Your body uses protein to build and repair tissue. You also use protein to make enzymes, hormones, and other body chemicals. Protein is an important building block of bones, muscle, cartilage, skin, and blood. So basically, very important. So try to eat high quality proteins, including eggs, beans, nuts, lean meats, fish, and low fat dairy daily, or at least, or try to do it at every meal. Ways to get the right types of protein. Limit high fat meats and dairy products, such as sausages and sour cream. Also limit marble cuts of meat. It's marbled because you can see the white in it, which means it's fat. Sirloin or tenderloins tend to be the leaner cuts of meat. Also, buy cuts of meat that are more red. That means there's less white fat. And trim the fat off before cooking. Choose, choose ground beef and turkey that is lean. Look for 90% lean or 10% fat, or even leaner. When buying ground turkey, purchase ground turkey breast. Otherwise, it may be dark turkey meat, which means that's where the fat is. Trim the skin off all chicken and turkey before eating. And for those of you who don't like red meat, pork, chicken, turkey, try fish. Fish is a lean source of protein and even the fattiest of fishes are good because the fat is heart healthy. And for those of you vegetarians out there, definitely try to get beans, peas, processed soy products, nuts and seeds to get your protein fix. Now we're gonna talk about fruits and vegetables, which make up the other half of the plate. Actually, you can notice from the plate before that the veggies are a little bit heavier than the fruit. So 
The fruits are any fruits or 100% fruit juice. And when I say any fruit, I mean any type of fruit. It can be fresh, frozen, dried, canned, and the same applies to vegetables, any vegetable or 100% vegetable juice. There are five categories to veggies. We have the dark green vegetables, the starchy vegetables, red and orange vegetables, beans and peas, and other vegetables. Fruits and veggies are naturally low in fat, sodium, and calories. They have no cholesterol. They are also a great source of nutrients, which are potassium, fiber, vitamin C, vitamin A, folate, and folic acid. So eating a diet rich in vegetables and fruits may reduce risk for heart disease, including heart attacks and strokes, and it also protects us against certain types of cancers and reduces the risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. You've probably heard the saying, eat a rainbow. Turns out this is great advice. One of the best ways to get all the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients you need is to eat a variety of colorful fruits and veggies. In addition to containing all the vital nutrients we need to live, plants contain phytonutrients. Phyto is the Greek word for plant. Phytonutrients are natural chemicals found in plants like fruits, veggies, whole grains, nuts, beans, and tea. These chemicals protect plants from germs, fungi, bugs, and other threats. But interestingly enough, we, when we eat them, they may help us prevent disease and keep our bodies working properly. So as you can see, there's different colors and the, that are associated with phytonutrients, and those are the ones that help us with our bodies. So orange and yellow is a beta carotene. That's what makes the orange and yellow in things like carrots and bananas, and that's what makes our, helps our heart, I mean, sorry, helps our immune system. Red and pink is lycopene. That helps lower risks of prostate cancer. And the third is green, which is lutein. Lutein um, protects our eyes. Overall, it's just fun and important to be creative in the kitchen to build your rainbow. Make a tropical fruit salad with different color fruits. Build salads that have different colored fruits and veggies mixed together. Prepare a mixed vegetable stir fry and pick one vegetable from each color. Bottom line, try to make your meals as pretty and colorful as possible. Also, this is a great way to incorporate um, if you have any children um, in the kitchen. Not only is it fun to pick different colors, but it also allows them to eat healthier things like fruits and veggies. So we are gonna have a group discussion. And first we're gonna talk about how do you prepare your fruits and or vegetables to make them tasty but still healthy. So here are some, they're grill colorful fruits or fruit kebab or veggies. Make it in a smoothie, breakfast smoothie with a strawberries, bananas, blueberries, spinach and, spinach and kale. Try crunchy vegetables instead of chips with hummus or guacamole. You can add fruit to oatmeal or ready to eat cereal, yogurt or waffle. You can make fruit your, your dessert. You slice the banana lengthwise and top with a scoop of low-fat frozen yogurt and sprinkle with a tablespoon of chopped nuts. Also, the other question, what have you found that helps you create colorful, healthy meals? Well, the other day, a lot of people said stir fry, and that is a great option. Other ideas are you can try different veggies on a pizza or even in an omelet. Have a veggie wrap with roasted vegetables and low-fat cheese and a whole wheat tortilla. Add color to salads with baby carrots or grapes or mandarin oranges. Add some pizzazz to sandwiches with sliced pineapple, apple, peppers, cucumber, tomato as filling. You can grate, shred, or chop vegetables such as zucchini, spinach, or carrots to lasagna or meatloaf, meatloaf, mashed potatoes, pasta sauce, or rice dishes. You can also make your main dish a salad with dark leafy greens and add all different fruits and vegetables to make it colorful. You can even add chickpeas or edamame topped with low fat dressing. Next, we're gonna talk about the facts about fat. Fat is a macronutrient like carbohydrates and protein. We call these macronutrients because of the quantity needed in our diet. We do have to be careful though with fats because they have more calories per gram than carbohydrates and protein. 
Carbohydrates and protein provide us with four calories per gram, whereas fat provides us with nine. That's over half of what the carbohydrates and proteins are. Dietary fat, in addition to providing calories or energy, helps our bodies absorb nutrients and produce important hormones. Healthy fat can also lower bad L uh, cholesterol, which is the LDL, and in doing so, helps us fight heart disease. Now we're gonna talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to fat. First, we'll start with the good. That's your unsaturated fat. Your unsaturated fat is liquid at room temperature. It's mostly in oils from plants. So you have two types. You got the monounsaturated and the polyunsaturated. Some examples of monounsaturated are avocados, nuts, and vegetable oils, such as canola, olive, and peanuts. Polyunsaturated are found in vegetable oils, such as safflower, sunflower, sesame, soybean, and corn oils. Polyunsaturated fat is also the main fat found in seafood. The two types are the omegas, the omega-3 and the omega-6. Next, the bad. The bad is the saturated fat, which is a solid at room temperature. That's why we call it solid fat. It is mostly found in foods such as milk, cheese, and meat. Poultry and fish have less saturated fat um, than red meat. Saturated fat is also in tropical oils such as coconut oil, palm oil, and cocoa butter. You'll find tropical oils in many snacks and in non-dairy foods such as coffee creamers and whipped toppings. Foods made with butter, margarine, or shortening have a lot of saturated fat. Saturated fat can also raise your cholesterol, so you have to be careful with how much you intake. A healthy diet is defined as less than 10% of daily calories from saturated fat. Last but not least, the ugly. Ugly is trans fat. This is a solid fat made from vegetable oils through a process called hydrogenation. This process increases the shelf life of fat and makes the fat harder at room temperature. Harder fat make that crispier crackers and flakier pie crust. But trans fats can, even though they're good, can also raise your cholesterol. So eat as little trans fats as possible. You'll find it in some processed foods, some snack foods, such as chips, crackers, and cookies, some margarines and salad dressings, and food made with shortening and partially hydrogenated oils. Try to avoid trans fats. There is no health benefit. In order to tell if a product has trans fats, you have to look at the actual ingredients. If it says partially hydrogenated oil, that equals trans fat. Even if the package says zero grams of fat, trans fat, it still can contain trans fat if you see hydrogenated oil. Just make sure you look at your ingredient list. So what's the hype of whole foods? The more we learn about nutrition, the more it seems we should eat the way people did 100 years ago. Recent research appears to be pointing us in the direction of eating mostly whole foods. That is, whole foods that are as close to their natural form as possible. So whole grains instead of refined, a baked potato instead of chips or fries, fresh berries instead of a toaster pastry, skinless chicken breast versus chicken nuggets. I think we get the idea. So whole foods are packed with all good stuff, and there's a lot of nutrients and reasons to eat them. First, we have your phytonutrients, which we've been talking about. Overall, there's a heart right there because it's great for your heart health. Nutrient shortage. Many of us are not getting all the nutrients we need from our foods. If you eat mostly whole foods, you're more likely to get all the good stuff that you need to stay healthy. Then you have your good fats. We get healthy fat from fish and plants. So if you eat enough of that, you are good to go. Fiber, it helps our GI tract, helps us stay um, full longer and helps with blood sugar. And even more importantly, it helps with our overall health, especially our heart health. Whole grains, rich in minerals, vitamins, and those phytonutrients, which once again are good for your heart. So fewer extras. Have you ever stopped to look at some ingredients on lists in the store? Can you even pronounce all those words? Many whole foods don't even have food labels because they are what they are. So let's look at the example above. So you got your medium apple. That's one ingredient and it's only 95 calories. Then we get a half cup of applesauce, so a little more processed or changed from its natural state. 
that's 110, but some add in things. Then you add one slice of an apple pie with crumb toppings, and that's only one tenth of a pie. Look at all of the ingredients, and that's 340 calories. So as you can see, a good thing to go by is look at how many ingredients there are and realize if what is in it is good for you or not. So here's some healthy strategies. We're gonna first talk about um, serving size. Serving size on the nutritional label may not equal the actual portion with what we eat. Measuring cups and spoons are great tools for making sure your portion is the same as the serving size. However, these tools aren't always available when you're getting ready to eat. Another way to estimate your serving size is by comparing it to something else. If, for example, a baseball or an average size fist it measures about one cup, a light bulb or a small scooped handful is about a half a cup. A deck of cards or the palm of your hand is about three ounces, the size of a thumb equals one tablespoon, and a postage stamp or the tip of your pointer finger to your first joint, that's about a teaspoon. If anyone wants a list of this, you can always email me and I can send them to you. Next tip is understanding your portions. So we're gonna talk about both eating at home and eating out. First home, eating one serving is off the food label is important to do. Then eating off of a plate instead of right out of the box or bag, that will help you control eating too much. Avoid multitasking. I know it's very hard right now with working from home, but the best way to do is put that food on a plate or measure it out and put in a bowl and take it with you while you work. Practice mindful eating. Eating slow. The slower you eat, and not too, too slow, but the slower you eat, the more likely you'll get full faster or quicker. Use smaller dishes, bowls, or glasses. Freeze food that you won't serve or eat right away. Eat meals regular time, and always try to snack on fruits and vegetables. So when you're eating out, try to share a meal with a friend or take half of it home. A great idea is to ask for the box before the food comes out, so you have it with you and you can split it before you even start your meal. Avoid all you can eat buffets. Order one or two healthy appetizers or side dishes instead of a whole meal. Look at it this way. You can try multiple different things instead of just one thing. Also, look for keywords on the menu. Make sure you know what you're eating and putting in your body. Skip the bread and, or chips. If you have to choose, choose the smaller size over the larger. And then also, big important one is to stop eating and drinking when you're full. Next, we're gonna be talking about staying hydrated. Drinking fluids is essential to good health. Needs may vary by individual. All liquids help you stay hydrated. We can hydrate our bodies through many different ones, whether it's water, fruit juices, coffee, sodas, iced tea, and other drinks. You can also get water through food. Some fruits and veggies contain a lot of water, such as watermelon and lettuce. You may need to increase your or decrease your fluids depending on the following factors exercise or activity level, illness, cold flu or infection, pregnancy and breastfeeding, and environment and temperature. Definitely make sure if you have any underlying heart issues to definitely talk with your physician. Also, it's important just to listen to your body signals and make sure you stay hydrated. And once again, follow your physician's recommendations. A few tips in order to be properly hydrated and help you. First, try to drink some water when you first wake up. Then keep water or other fluids with you during your, during your day. Then have something to drink with each meal. That will help. Also, if you don't like plain water, spruce it up with some flavors, citrus, herbs, berries, or cucumber, anything to make it taste better. And lastly, if you feel hungry, you may try drinking some water first as your brain can confuse the thirst and hunger signal. Okay, we're gonna quickly, I'm sorry, some technical issues. Okay, now we're back. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna be talking about eating on a budget. Healthy meals don't have to break the bank. Here 
are some suggestions on ways to eat healthy without stretching the wallet. First, create a grocery game plan. Making a plan before heading to the store can help you get organized, save money, and choose healthy options. Before making a list, write down the meals you want to make this week. Buy for the week means you'll, you'll make fewer shopping trips and buy only what you actually need, which means saving money. See what you already have before buying. What do you need to use before it spoils? What can you freeze if you're not going to use? Make sure to consider your schedule for the week when planning meals. Plan to eat leftovers at least one day each week, if not more. This all reduces the amount of food that is wasted and saves money. Next, we're going to talk about Shop Smart to fill your cart. Stock up on sale items and join your grocery store's loyalty program. You'll also save money if you stick to your list and avoid adding extras to your cart. And honestly, the best thing to do is not shop when you're hungry. You can save money by buying fruits and vegetables in season or try canned, but make sure you look for added sugar and salt amounts. Frozen foods and veggies are also an option for saving money. Rice and pasta are budget friendly, beans and peas are low cost as well, and great source for protein. When buying chicken or beef, look for family size value packs. For seafood budget friendly options, try canned tuna or salmon, and also, Eggs are a great source of protein and very low cost. For dairy, buying larger size yogurt containers may be more cost effective than single servings. Another way to cut money and unnecessary calories is to avoid buying soda. Also skip the chips and cookie aisle if possible. Those snacks add up fast and don't provide any nutritional value. Lastly, understanding the price tag can help too. The tag on the grocery shelf has very useful information. Retail price, that's the price you pay for each item. Unit price is how much the item costs per pound or ounce or quart or whatever it may be. Use that when you compare items to see which product gives more for less. So in summary, we have three, I mean, six important points. One, read your label. Two, create a healthy plate with a variety of food groups. Make sure you use that, that image in your head. Half fruits and veggies, a fourth of grains, and a fourth of protein with a serving of low-fat dairy. Three, eat as many whole foods as possible. Four, pay attention to portions. Five, stay hydrated. And six, plan ahead and shop smart. Here are some resources to help you on your journey to eating healthy. ChooseMyPlate.gov is a great resource and contains a ton of information on how to build a healthy plate, specific recommendations based on your age and gender, recipes, menu, and information on eating healthy on a budget and shopping trip. Then there's the heart.org. It contains a wealth of information on how to eat heart smart, cooking tips, recipes, and much, much more. Lastly, there are also a handful of apps that are available out there that can help you reach your health and wellness goals. One of those is Cigna.com app. That is a great resource and it's free. Thank you all for participating and listening to this webinar today. I really hope you learned a lot today and will help you make better choices or more so healthier choices from here on out. If you have any questions regarding this presentation or health coaching, please email me at samantha.simpson at cigna.com or you can call me at 703-718-1576. Health coaching is a great benefit at no additional cost. You can also earn monetary incentives and it will help you become a better you. Thanks guys.